final section of the day. We have another two hours of some incredible content for you. So no doubt there'll be people joining us uh, throughout the course of this uh, talk. But since we're such a small audience, we can keep it somewhat interactive if you would like. So please feel free to ask questions throughout. And I'm delighted to kick off uh, this final section with Hey Rai, uh, who's a strategy and growth manager at Gestalt Robotics. Um, formerly from Siemens Research, um, your talk is going to be focused on how AI can help automate the maintenance of the safety and critical mobility in operations. So a very uh, apt topic for our German manufacturing sector. So welcome to the stage. Hey Ryan. Thank you so much. Hi everybody and welcome from my end to my talk. Uh, I'm head of growth at Gestalt Robotics and I will talk about how we enable Aut partly automated maintenance uh, for high-speed trains in Germany, but also I'm going to introduce the company for a bit, and uh, I'm looking very much forward to uh, having an open discussion with you in the meanwhile, so feel free to ask questions at any time uh, in between. So Gestalt Robotics was founded in 2016 by the three gentlemen on the left. Um, it's uh, Jens Lambrecht, who is a professor at TU Berlin for Industry Grade Networks and Clouds, Thomas Stauffenbiel, uh, Ariane Group uh, rocket engineer, and uh, Eugen Funk, he was uh, doing um, research on computer vision at the German Institute for uh, Luft- und Raumfahrt, so uh, aerospace. We are now 60 people at this time, um, all in all growing without a VC. So we've been uh, working with our clients and growing with our clients uh, in the process. We've been awarded uh, by Fabrik des Jahres, which is a, um, a German manufacturing award as the most innov innovative startup last year. We've been awarded by our customer Deutsche Bahn for the eCheck project, which I'm going to be talking about in a bit. And um, yeah, the, the company itself has its focus on software. So we are even though we are named Gestalt Robotics, we are not a hardware robotics company, but we are software driven. So what we build are technological modules uh, that are highly networked and virtualized and uh, that enable computer vision and machine learning on the shop floor. So I think the AI part is no news to the audience here, but I think what's interesting is that we really work with hardware, with camera systems, and we build entire solutions around that. So they are ready for production, they're scalable, and in the end, adaptive to our needs. This is what AI allows us these days. So uh, we've authored a DIN norm, very German, <laughs> very German thing to do, um, for AI lifecycle and quality assessment, and we hold a couple of patents in the, in the field of virtualization and in the field of robotics. Um, yes, and the, our idea is to work with our customers, so our customers are mostly across Germany, and um, a bit in Europe, and then we have also have some abroad in the US and Canada, um, to work with them to jointly develop industry-specific use cases to solve their needs. And our clients thus come from a variety of sectors. So we have clients in mobility, such as Deutsche Bahn, such as Stadler, but we also have uh, clients in the classical discrete manufacturing um, and in chemical and in pharma, in the pharma space, which is interesting because we apply very similar methods to solving their issues, but always ha have to adapt and have to work with them to get to new ideas. As I said, we are a software company, but we work with hardware partners. We are vendor agnostic, so the robots we use could be a UR, could be a Fanuc, we don't care, but uh, we obviously have preferred partners who we work with for integration, which is especially Strama, they're going to get important later on. We also work with Verizon in the US, uh, deploying mobile robots enabled by edge computing uh, and uh, with, with others in the field. We're active in research. You mentioned that I worked uh, with Siemens uh, on the Berlin Research Innovation Ecosystem. Um, so we are, as a company, co-founder of the Werner von Siemens Center here in Berlin, uh, promoting industry, academia, and startup collaboration. Uh, we are doing around 10 research projects currently which are pretty wide across the field, which enable us to develop ideas, push them forward, and then work th those through with the customer, get first customer interest um, in the end. Yes, we mainly work with very large corporations that have the funding to go from POC to MVP to a full-scale solution, but we are more and more also working with Mittelstand, so with uh, medium-sized companies, especially in production, because the solutions are becoming more and more standardized. I'm going to talk about that a bit, and more, thus more and more accessible. Our goal is 
to bring forward the shop floor, uh, shop floor of today. So our solution fields lie in four sectors. First and foremost, computer vision. Computer vision for us is the pure computer vision, so what uh, you would see here as well. Um, the second part is autonomous mobility, mobile robotics. We have a, a system there that I'm going to talk about in a bit. Intelligent robotics then is everything arm related. So, and then we have the worker assistance. I'm going to also show you something there um, that is mostly about enabling the workers to do their tasks more efficiently because workforce is not going to end. We are still going to need people, especially in complex tasks, but we can aid them. We can make it faster, the training and those kind of things. So, uh, some solutions we implemented, um, I'm going to talk about three of them, and one a lot. <laughs> In autonomous mobile um, monitoring, we have implemented Navigate This, which is, was our first product. We developed it together with the Verizon in the US. They asked us, we have 5G now, which wasn't right. Um, 5G is not fully, in, fully there yet, but it's coming more and more, and it's coming more and more to the shop floor, and the idea is, what can you do with 5G? You can virtualize and offload high resources and use the edge to run more powerful models uh, for, for mobile devices or for stationary decentral devices. And this is what we do with Navigate This, uh, enabling uh, quite interesting use cases. Second thing um, is with a customer in the uh, chemical space, uh, mostly the laboratory, again a space where we are very flexible, where things come in that we don't really know. They are in different vials, I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Then we have the AR assistance, uh, talked about that. And then we also have different topics in quality and in process control, where it's more about really getting into high volumes and understanding uh, what's happening. Quite interesting case is the assembly gate, where it's about few shot learning, because assembly is a process, especially in high value goods that are highly customized, um, where you need to have not as many samples as usually needed by AI. And yeah, last but not least, I'm going to talk about eCheck a lot. eCheck is the project we're doing with Deutsche Bahn, the reason why we are 60 people <laughs> and our proudest moment. So uh, autonomous mobile monitoring, um, we call it Navigate This. Navigate This is a platform enabling 5G and edge computing uh, for mobile robots. So this is, video was filmed in Werner von Siemens Center. Um, on, where, we ha where we are not only a part of, but where we are also renting some space to develop mobile robotic solutions. So obviously, the system can navigate. You utilize the entire resources from the edge to be able to navigate using machine vision, using, um, using also more advanced algorithms. Then we can follow a path, but also what we can do then is we have a camera on top that can detect specific things, uh, easy, e easy models. For example, here we see a pellet, and then we can put it on the robot's map and play that back into a manufacturing execution system, an SAP system, so we can sort of feed data into the digital twin of, of the factory and give them a more complete um, view of what's happening, uh, what's happening on the shop floor. You could imagine cases such as people lying around there, such as a helmet being off, uh, all those kind of things would be quite interesting. You could also think about way more advanced cases that are, for example, uh, fences that are open, doors that are open, these kind of things. Also, you can think, if there is a door, I should never get around it, not right next to it, um, so that gets interesting. Uh, mobile inspection is the last use case. Inspection use cases are things we are doing quite often, but why not do it from a mobile robot if we have all the resources from the edge available? So. Edge computing um, is, is the enabler for this. I'm just going to show it really briefly uh, because we have quite a technical audience here as well, I feel. Uh, so we are enabling our, our system with edge computing. So this basically just should show you that the entire resources of the mobile robotic stack are offloaded to the edge. So the, the robot itself is purely a receiver of commands and a sender of data. And now, if you think it one step further, you could also think, why do I need a robot? I could just place a camera somewhere, and the camera could, show, could also put data into the system, and we would have a more complete view, especially in difficult to navigate terrain. So you can enhance, navigate this also with stationary cameras, and build a complete set of your floor. So enabling asset tracking, enabling lost and found use cases, enabling inspection use cases, basically everything you can think in AI, with the classical approaches, 
you can think here in, in a, in a mobile-based mobile approach. So one step further, um, the laboratory sample is something where I want to bring a bit of hardware into the conversation here because we're talking so much about AI. AI is very interesting, but what can you do with AI if you combine it with hardware? Well, you can work in a laboratory really interestingly because uh, we had the case, our customer, they get these, uh, you see it on the bottom, uh, bottom left of the pictures, they get those samples they want to test and they want to run them through their high throughput systems. But the problem is the manufacturers, there is no standards, they bring them in many different files. And so we developed a system that is independently gripping uh, the parts that collaboratively opens them. You see it in the middle picture. So the two arms are working together. Then uses visual surveying, uh, a nice technique to pinpoint this, and pipette is very small uh, into this very small and tiny tube and many more AI-based skills that work on top of that. So we have those two off-the-shelf robots that are UR robots. We have a bit advanced grippers. We put a bit of work into that. And then we have a software system that allows to add flexible skills, flexible tasks to, to the deal. Um, by the way, to the, I don't know the time with this turning watch, so if you can just show me minutes, I'll be, I'll be fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, this is a really interesting use case. It's a platform solution, so for any laboratory, um, you, could, you could enhance it, you could set it up, but uh, for now, we are focusing on this, um, how do you say, material inbound process for, uh, for laboratories. So the next use case I'm going to, thank you very much. The next use case I'm going to talk about is adaptive AR assistance. Uh, really briefly, um, we have a worker here. Um, he got data from a digital twin. We scanned it before whole process. And the quite interesting thing here is how could you use AI? Well, you could use a video stream to tell the worker where exactly the, the, the data is he needs and what exactly he should do. So we are giving them the task uh, that what they should do on the, on the um, AR base on the device. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna skip through a bit. The last thing before we get to the magic is um, the quality gate, we call it. So when you have an assembly process, they are very manual, very prone to fail. We developed this together with Siemens. So you have a scan of um, this, um, it's a medium voltage device, let's, uh, and you want to know whether all parts are there. And this is usually a task that people need to do, two people need to do because you need this 4i principle. So we replace two of the four eyes with a robot with a few short learning technology. So you need uh, five, five to ten pictures to train very fast, and then you can check the configuration of, of those devices. Yeah. Um, and now I get to the last part that is eCheck. eCheck is a project um, by Deutsche Bahn, and the problem behind eCheck is sustainability. We want to. We talked about a lot about sustainability today. Well. Deutsche Bahn is the most sustainable way to, tra to travel in Germany, um, but there's not enough trains, Deutschlandtakt is not really working, maintenance is a pain. So a fleet growth of 250 trains doubles the maintenance need for Deutsche Bahn, roughly, I think it's a bit less than, than double, but let's go double. Um, and maintenance capacities are at their limits already. So um, we have a high personnel need for this, and the personnel is aging as well. Uh, so Deutsche Bahn made this uh, approach that they, well, they are building new sites. Actually, they're not. They just recently announced they're canceling one of their, one of their sites. But in general, they're they are expanding their, their maintenance uh, time. And they also want to digitize their maintenance. Um, and the interesting thing about this is really the cost. When, they, when the article came out uh, that they're canceling this site, it said 400 million of budget is canceled for this site. So one site to, to inspect ICE trains is 400 million. We are digitizing five of them in Germany. Um, so this project came to be through a, a POC that we did with them. Luckily, a paid one. We don't do free ones. Um, so together with them, we uh, built this underfloor scan. So the, the robot drives underneath and scans uh, critical parts. This was also few shot learning, very basic AI, uh, not spectacular. but the task in the end is to scan the entire train. So we want to have a 100% uh, surface scan, and also we want to have a solution that work, works both in the green field and the brown field. Um, well, the solution for this is a camera gate, together with AI processing in the back, and then a human verification, as well as robotic systems that assist and uh, do manual tasks that are quite repetitive and 
not as interesting possibly. Um, but before we get to the solution, we get maybe to some challenges. Um, I called it Mittelstand, Deutsche Bahn, and a tech company, and Scrum. Um, well, it's, it's not super easy to work with such a large corporate as such a small company, uh, very limited resources, and we built really an integrated team with Deutsche Bahn for our AI development. But it also has large benefits, because we get all the problems right away into our team and can work faster and can develop the solutions faster. So um, the project is still ongoing. We are not, we are not crying yet, but it's, it's a very, very interesting approach to work so closely. Strama, our main partner, general contractor, is a, is a Mittelständler from Bayern. They are doing Sondermaschinenbau, excellent company. And uh, Deutsche Bahn has a huge AI team within their own company. Um, and us together, uh, we are trying to solve this. There's also technology-related challenges. So producing and uh, precise and reproducible images is one major challenge. I'm going to talk about how we solve that in a bit. Then the pure amount of data that we are producing. We are scanning fully an ICE train and drive through, very slow drive through, five kilometers per hour roughly. Um, and we are producing 6,500 images per wagon. I think the data amount is something about 30 gigabytes. We have very sparse errors. So how often does an ICE wheel really break? Not that often. So <laughs> to get to the errors, we need to we need to wait a bit, and then we also have the proof of equal safety, so the system, we're working together with Deutsche Bahn on that, the system has to be as secure as a person. So the solution for the first part, for the reproducible images, is this camera gate. This is the concept painting. Um, we scan the entire thing. It has 32 cameras. Um, we have a speed-related mapping of the pictures, so we know exactly that we are taking the same pictures. You're going to see it in a bit and we, um, we map those pictures and train the AI later on. So for us, data acquisition is the key here. It's way more about data and acquiring the data and processing the data than in the end about the AI. Important, of course, as well. This is the way we process it, a modular system, just going briefly through it. So we have all the cameras, all the scanners, and then in the middle where we, we fuse it and send it out, we are fully integrated into the Deutsche Bahn system with, with that. When we... Um, once we process it, um, uh, can I go back? Yes. Um, one important thing, we are processing a large part of it on site. So we have a, um, 16 edge computers right, right there, and then we put it to the cloud as well. So it's also, again, a distributed system, which is usually for industrial use cases, the core to approach those things. The user interfaces, we are put, giving the workers. The workers remain there. Deutsche Bahn is not going to fire anybody because of us. Uh, on the opposite, they need the people and they need to make them more productive because they don't find the people to solve their tasks. Some are going to retirement, some want to work less, and so they, they still need the people. Uh, but we are giving them tasks that are also, again, located on the train, where, where they should go, what they should do, or also just what they should check up on because obviously it's not going to be 100% reliable from the start. We're trying to improve as we go on. And also, it's going to be assisted so the Vorarbeiter, the, the head of staff, can know what their people are doing, and we have digitized the paper-based process in the end. Interesting about the, um, about the note, the note was basically, so the public tender process was basically everything they do before, they want to do it digitally. And we are in the process of working out of how to, to do that best. So um, last bit, there is parts where robotics help again, this is done it only in part by us, Strama plays a huge part there. So mobile manipulation, it's a mobile platform that goes there and puts the dirty water out and the clean water in. Obviously, it's two systems, one for dirty and one for clean. Um, and also there is small scanners. Um, we're not really sure yet if we need them really, but small scanners to understand um, critical parts like the wheels, um, or the, actually where the wheels hang. I'm not sure what the name is in German. So where do we stand? We've installed the prototype. This is the actual drawing, and this is the prototype in Munich. So the prototype is um, not a freestanding camera gate, but uh, already allowed us to take pictures. And we are going towards a Germany-wide integration. So what you see here are the sites where we're going to install it. We have five sites across Germany. Each are going to be equipped with one camera gate, and some are going to be equipped with two, so seven camera gates in total. This is what uh, the construction looked like. And on the right side, you see the pictures. And the interesting thing now is those pictures are not from 
one train, but they are from, ver from various trains driving through the system, and we are taking the same picture every time. Thus, we can finally train AI. And the summary, this is the gate as it stands now, completely in Cologne. Um, the benefits for rail operators are big. They are getting, freeing their personal from tedious tasks. They are freeing their sites, which they don't have to uh, build. So we are allowing them to expand their fleets while not expanding their sites. Um, they can make better predictions on their maintenance. They can schedule better. They, um, we, have, we are basically, because it's a camera gate, we are manufacturer independent. Currently, it's ICE trains. We are working together with the daughter, of, daughter company of Deutsche Bahn um, to turn each shake into smart assistant maintenance and roll it out for high-speed trains across the world. Um, Infraview is the company to name them. And what you could do as an outlook, you could obviously track the vehicle life cycle and analyze how it is changing over time. Thank you very much. Um, some final remarks maybe. We don't have a VC. Still interested in them? Possibly. We are a very tech-heavy company, so if you're tech developers, feel free to reach out. Even more interesting, if you're a non-techie but want to work in robotics, I'm really looking for people. Um, and if you're a potential customer, please also be in touch. Thank you very much for the attention, and I'm open to your questions. Thank you very much. Hey, I know, stay right there. We've got some time, so I've got some questions for you. And please feel free to put your hand up if you do have a question. But given the VC piece and putting my investment hat on, um, I'm trying to understand where there's a lot of different projects that you do there, and it feels very much like an agency or proof of concepts that you then move forward into actual production. You talked about some form of IP. Is there a consistency in what you're doing across these projects that set your core IP? Yes, um, so at the, at the core of it stands, one, the capability to set up those systems and to individualize them to industries. So for example, the laboratory automation is something that could be used in any laboratory. Um, each shake could be used by any high-speed operator. Um, and the core of many solutions is an MLOps uh, pipeline that we have in the back. Understood, so that's good to know. And a final piece around your uh, project with Deutsche Bahn, which I think is a fantastic one. Um, what does that relationship look like? And is it a sort of co-headed speed or are you an extension of their workbench? It's beautiful to see the ecosystem coming together with a big corporate, yeah. another Mittelstand, and then a startup. And maybe share some lessons on that, because I think we could all learn on how to bring together different component skill sets to actually get a project like that off the ground. So um, it was a public tender. We applied together with Strama. Okay. Um, we got it, and so we are the supplier of the te technology system. E-Check as a project is a project, a top project by Deutsche Bahn, um, in which they are building also new maintenance sites, in which they are um, sort of having their project site on the end. There are more people than we are in their project. Um, we are working very closely with, especially with their AI team, um, to s build sort of the custom-made solution that they wish for. Mm. Um, and so it's, it's not a workbench. We are clear it's a clear supplier relationship. That's also why supplier award. Um, but we have them, for example, in our Scrum events. Um, we have them in there, and they give their feedback immediately because we don't want this. We work for one year, two years, three years, and then just hand it over, and they say no. Yeah. <laughs> That doesn't work. And that will help your investment case, no doubt. Mm. So uh, if there are any other questions from the floor, because we are running to the full half an hour. So hey, I thank you very much for a very insightful talk. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so on to our next speaker, who I have to say is probably one of the coolest startups that I've seen.